Hi, I'm Patty Owens. Um, I'm an RN, and I've been actively involved in ASLMS since 1988 in the Nursing Allied Health section. So today I've been asked to talk about this new guideline. This has been published by the American um, National Standards uh, Institute for the Safe Use of Lasers in Healthcare. And this is the ANSI Z136.3. And this has just come to press as of January 1, 2012. Um, this represents about six very long years of committee work. Um, some of the nurses um, uh, at ASLMS here at the Nursing Allied Health section have been vitally and very importantly involved in this document, along with some of the physicians. Um, what this document represents is a standard of practice for lasers and use of healthcare. And that can vary um, in a variety of places. And as we've seen, lasers being moved out of the hospitals and to uh, salons and spas and med spas, also dental offices, and also medical offices. Now this is a recommended guideline. This is not a regulation. However, numerous governmental and state agencies like OSHA, um, numerous state licensing boards, um, health boards, they all have adopted this as the standard of practice. So what is this document bringing to you as a user now at your facility? Well, it's been expanded. The scope of practice has been expanded, which I've just discussed, and that it is not dealing with hospital-based lasers anymore. This uh, document also expands the role of the laser user, and it com com uh, completely defines what that user's responsibility is as far as the care of the client or the patient, and as far as safety controls to be put into place to uh, make sure that staff, client, and the user will be free of harm. It also expands the role of the users so that they are now adopting some of the responsibilities of the laser safety officer. And in the past, that has not been there. There's also a new section dealing with third-party laser users and rental companies, and this is new. So not only has um, it discusses the physical assessment and inspection of these rental devices, to making sure that they are compliant with the governmental and state regulations. But there's also information in here dealing with um, the importance of the rental company to comply with the facilities, policies, and procedures, and also training the staff that's going to be in the room with these rental lasers so that the staff is also aware of what safety control measures need to be put in place. There's also a new section on laser audits that should be done once a year. OSHA also requires that facility audits be performed once a year. And what now, it clearly defines what now needs to be inspected as far as looking at the equipment, the policies and procedures, and staff education. There's, lastly, there is a new section that is um, a recommended section for very large uh, hospitals or facilities with um, quite a diverse use of lasers or facilities that are, have a lot of franchise. And this is appointment of two possibly new um, positions. One is the deputy laser safety officer. The deputy would assume some of the responsibilities of the LSO. Um, and the other one is the laser safety site contact. And this is an individual that could be placed in a multiple facility sort of a uh, management arrangement to also help the, the laser safety officer. It's not required, though, for small practices. Um, so lastly, um, you know, how do you obtain this document? Well, you can get online and you can download the PDF um, from the actual um, American National Standards Institute, or you can buy a copy of it from Rockwell Laser Industries or from um, LIA, and this will be available for you for purchase. So thank you once again for the opportunity to be here to discuss this important new document and how it will affect laser safety. It's a document that everyone needs to have at their facility. Thank you.